Oh, it is so time to open this box. It's been sitting on my floor for ages. I've been making excuse after excuse. But, no more. Oh. Keysight Certificate of Calibration. Power supplies. Power cord. And, I bet I can't get this out without making a fool of myself. Maybe we should turn it upside down and let it come out that way. That's probably a great idea. And now it's upside down. That's okay. Oh, oh baby. Oh, that is heavy. Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. Okay, time to put it on the desk. Okay, oh, plastic off. Wow, that is so heavy. So, here it is. This is, please tell me there's a fold out. No, no fold out feet. Oh, I hate that. Anyway. So, this is my new Keysight EDU36311A. It's a triple output programmable DC power supply. So, I've got three different channels. Uh, I believe one of them is voltage limited, and two of them can be linked, I believe. So, you don't get true full three independent channels up to 30 volt one amp, but that's okay. The 6 volt 5 amp limit on one of them is perfectly fine because most of the stuff I'm doing is 5 volts. So it's okay. Uh, let's take a look at the machine. So what's on the sides? <coughs> okay. Looks like a something vent. Don't know what that is inside there. The back. Seriously, this is heavy. Whoa, I'm getting a workout. So big whopping fan. Power, obviously, uh, interesting. So it's got supports 230 volts, 115, 100 but it's switchable, manually switchable. USB and a LAN port and a lock key thing. And then oh, that side, another vent. And so the bottom, oh my God, this is gonna wreck my back. Um, four feet. I guess I could 3D print something to go on these to lift it up. Um, or maybe there's some feet you can buy. I don't know, but that's a little bit annoying. I'd really like to uh, plug it in and lift it up. Well, let's plug it in first. So, I've already stolen power from my VNA for this video and Ethernet for the VNA. And which way does this go? Uh, this way, I hope. Yes. So, let's get something to prop this up with. Sounds ridiculous. Some 0201 caps. Maybe. Will that stay up a bit? Will that be okay? Hopefully. Hopefully they'll give you a better view of the screen. Uh, maybe we'll actually zoom in a bit. Let's turn it on. Ooh. Christmas tree lights. So as I was taking the plastic off, the corner of this was caught on the plastic. So we'd rip the cover off, rip the screen. Yeah. Anyway, I really enjoy peeling those off and I lost the peel off opportunity. So, very cool, okay. Nice big screen, I have no idea how big it is. Um, and, is it not a touch screen? Oh, <laughs> oh well, whatever, I just assumed. Don't you assume everything these days is a touch screen, color screen? I assumed it was a touch screen. Okay, anyway, so we've got our three channels and why are these showing 0 0.003 volts on them? Hmm, that is interesting. So it looks like by default channel 1 is set up for the 6 volts, 5 amps, and these are set up for the 30 volts. 30 volt, 1 amp, 30 volt, 1 amp, 6 volt, 5 amp, so it says on the bottom. Should have just read that. Anyway, okay, so what have we got? We've got Selection of the channel, uh, voltage up and down, current up and down. So I'm assuming if I'm in here I can, right, voltage up and down, defaults to the middle. Interesting, why is it default or does it remember where it was? So I'm assuming I can, whoop, it wrapped. So I can do this. So five volts, 
5 amps and I see I should be able to if I okay so that puts me in the middle again um, maybe it puts me there because that's how the increments work yeah right increments work in tens and that's why it puts me to the middle that's gonna be annoying I wonder if I can can I just go 5.00 I can enter right so I don't necessarily have to so it's defaulting to volts so I should be able to just go 12 enter okay so it's gonna be annoying if I want to adjust it and it goes to the middle every time like if I want to take it down to 9 volts but that's okay cool so what else we got on the front all on all off so I'm assuming if I just go on on number one nothing connected all right 4.999 volts no current being drawn that's okay so the clamp and banana doesn't come with any cables that's fine I've got for my old one so this is replacing my old bench supply my Tenmar which the rotary encoder has failed so I can only set the voltage or the current one direction <laughs> uh, not the band the value and it's also the fan which is always loud this is not as loud you can hear it blowing air out of that I think or is it sucking air in anyway but the the fan was obnoxiously loud to start with and it's been getting louder and louder so I do plan on trying to fix that and I'll use that downstairs this will be my my unit for upstairs okay so what else we got so back 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 nothing so we've got tracking what is that doing tracking is linking those two that must be the two that are linked and meter view oh okay so I can right not quite sure so what's this giving me? It's just giving me, it's not giving me an extra decimal place. So OCP on and off, right, there are delays and stuff. Okay, let's have a look. So if I go to source settings, okay, so source settings and I'm on number three, let's go to number one. So there I've got uh, over voltage protection I can see it individually. I've got OCP, I have no idea what that stands for. Anyway, I guess I'll read the manual. Delay, um, protection clear, obviously if it's triggered the protection, uh, I can turn OCP on and off. So is that the delay for the protection, maybe? OV protection, to over voltage, OCP, over, over current protection? I don't know, that's what the manual's for. Okay, so that's source settings, then we've got um, output, oh, let me just change the view again. Output settings. Okay, so that's going to show me graphs of them. Ons and delays and maybe tracking on, off. Okay, that's just a link near that. Uh, what else we got? Store recall. Okay, uh, utilities. What's in utilities? IO config. IO config. Did I plug? Oh, look at that. I've got an IP address. Woo! And the USB has got a visa address, which I have no idea what that is. Anyway, um, MDNS service, so the key site comes up there, host name. So, LAN settings, can I. Okay, so DHCP is on, subnet, okay, good. So obviously, I can change the host name, which I don't need to do. And what's in services? Okay, DSCP on and off, or DNS on and off, yep, okay, good. Um, and land reset, which I don't need, so that's IO. Uh, instrument setup, calibration, and self test. Self test. Okay, that was a very quick self test. <laughs> okay, uh, calibration. Oh, logged out state. I've got to log in, do I? to enter a passcode to log in to be able to calibrate. Yeah, let's not do that because I'll break it. Um, so that's that. Um, so user settings. Oh, language. English, beeper on and off. Key click on and off. Display on and off. Why would you turn the display off? Okay, uh, auto dim on and off. Okay, nice. Date and time. Doesn't that not pick it up from 
the day looks right, the time doesn't look right. But that's okay, I'll set that later. Uh, back, and I think that was everything. Help, help about. Uh, IP address, serial number, firmware version. Doesn't seem to be a way of updating firmware directly from this. Um, I wonder how you would update firmware. And I'm assuming errors, there are no errors. Okay, so is that all the UI? I think that was all the UI. Back, back. There's no more back. And then it's unlock and lock. And what does that do? Oh, it's currently locked. Oh, interesting. So you can't change anything. Maybe. Okay, so now it says it's programmable. So I wonder how that works. Obviously, USB. There must be some software that I would need to download. Maybe that software is what allows me to check for and update firmware revisions. But here it is, nice and pretty. Now this is a my first dark instrumentation. It's not, I wouldn't call it black. It's not even super dark. I was expecting the unit to be as dark as the front. Anyway, I've got my uh, scope, which is over here, and my VNA, which is over there, which are both these whitey, beigey colors. So this stands out like a sore thumb, but that's okay. Um, I kind of like that dark mode for everything in the world. The feet though, like I, I really was expecting some type of um, fold out feet, even cheapy ones like this, these feel really cheapy. I mean, they work really well, but they feel kind of cheapy, but nothing, I'm gonna have to put something under there to lift it up. Or maybe that's how it's designed to be stacked onto things, I don't know. But there it is, my new bench power supply. I don't know where it's gonna live. Like it, it might just keep it here for now anyway, but it would probably make more sense if it was closer to where I stream, because um, that would be the most often place I would need it, or near my microscope when I'm testing. I don't know, I've got a really long desk now, and so trying to work out where everything goes is harder, believe it or not. But you know, first world problems. Okay, that's it. That is my new bench supply. Uh, hopefully you'll see me using it in future streams or videos. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to actually having one that I can change the voltage and current on for a change. And there's the screen dimming. Woohoo! Doesn't seem like you can adjust the timer on it though. You can just turn it on and off. And no touch to wake up. But there we go. Cool. And there it is. My new bench supply. I'm really excited to finally have it open. I actually had it shipped to me uh, two or three weeks before I moved. So it was living in the old place on the floor in the way for three weeks. It's one of the first boxes I brought over here when there was nothing else here. And it has gone through the ringer. It has been pushed and shoved out of the way 30, 40 times around here. I think uh, there was a week I was eating my lunch off it, like a table, you know, the brown box, it's okay, um, before my desks were here. So I'm um, quite excited to finally actually have it open and have it on my bench. I'm going to put the link to the product in the description below. I bought it from Element 14. No, I'm not affiliated with Element 14 or Keysight. As I mentioned, it's one of their Edu models. So it's designed for the educational space. It's a, a slightly cut down version compared to their ultra professional units. And it was priced accordingly. So it was quite reasonable. Uh, could be why it doesn't have the uh, touch screen. Anyway, it's fine. So yeah, uh, I've got my new camera. Uh, my old one died. I've got a new space. Hopefully I'll be making more videos more often, uh, project videos and unboxing videos and who knows what else. So please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not, click the alarm bell to be notified when I have more videos coming out. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I look forward to catching you next time. Okay, catch you later. Bye.